Thank you, folks, as we catch our breath here. Please welcome Julia Rosenberg. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you Thank so you much for, the, for, for this. Um, tell us a little bit of, oh, we have uh, the beautiful behind us. Tell us a little bit of um, how this all started. Uh, I was given the collection Life for Theater for my 13th birthday, and so it stayed with me. And 10 years ago, I had an idea on a morning run that Charlotte drew her life story, so I needed to produce an animated film, a drawn film of her life story. And I'm usually very neurotic and stress test every idea, but I just put my head down, and 10 years later, here we are. I, did, I never queried Just it. like I, that. I just was like, that's what's going to happen. And I got home, and I Googled Charlotte Sullivan Foundation before I even got in the shower, and... Yeah. Um, an amazing story. And, and yes, my next question was going to be that decision um, to make it animated, which I think is a very, is a very brave decision. And um, you know, the story could have been told in many different ways. But I think also a really right decision to use it really with, with the kind of story that it's telling. Was there ever a moment where it was considered otherwise? No. And having never worked in animation, that's odd. But again, the, the idea came to me, and I just. It, it made the most sense. And as I you know, developed the film and pitched it and raised financing for it, the same idea seemed to resonate with people that I talked to. It's not easy to raise millions of dollars to make an animated film for adults about a woman who dies in the Holocaust, but um, everyone sort of uh, saw the, how appropriate animation was to this idea. So how did how did that process start? How did uh, the the film actually become a film? Where where did it go from your kernel of an idea to this beautiful piece that we saw here? Uh, I've made films before, so I just worked on this as I would a, uh, a a regular film, as it were. And I started working with screenwriters, and we worked for several years. And then I found some partners in Europe who could raise financing in their countries, and I raised financing in Canada and. We found a casting director and attached our amazing cast and moved forward. And so you have um, an amazing cast, of course, Kira Knightley um, voicing Charlotte. Um, uh, how did she come into this project? We asked her and she said yes. <laughs> Re really a simple one. Well, it, it sort of is. I mean, if I've been doing this for a while and the casting director I worked with in London also had wonderful relationships. And I think for independent films, it's really this, the, the script and the, that convinces people. And the screenwriters did a fantastic job. The script was beautiful. The direction seems to be amazing and, and really get, gets into the, I mean, it's visually told and, um, and um, usually uses animation, I think, in creative ways. And almost, um, almost it's interesting when you, when you compare, I mean, I'm also not the greatest expert on, on animation. Neither am I. But, but it's, not, it's not kid animation, even though the, the, the look might, uh, might resemble some films, it actually, um, the, the whole style of it is of the cinema that it's representing of, of that, that speaks to a story like this one. I don't know if that makes sense. It, it does. I, I think it's 2D, it's 2D, and so that is sort of old-fashioned. And uh, it's not very innovative in terms of what is happening in animation now. We c one can do all these incredible things. But it has more close-ups than almost any animated film you'll see. And we spent a lot of time working on facial expressions to try to capture a complicated moment in in Charlotte's story. It's, it, we take for granted how empathetic and convincing emotion passing on a human face is in real time. It's, it's a lot harder to reconstruct it through drawing. And, and I, th I think that's kind of, kind of the elements that you pick up there, that it's not, it's not like most, uh, most animation you see um, for kids or? Well, there was a recent uh, op-ed in Variety by two animation directors who took offense at how the Academy Award for Best Animated Picture was presented this year, basically saying that you know animated films are made for kids and adults who have to watch it over and over again, and Disney princesses, and they sort of said it's time for the world to, to notice that animation's a, a medium, it's not a genre. Fabulous. Um, the of, of her story versus um, the story of World War II and the Holocaust uh, is, I think, very interesting in this because 
in many ways, it's it's in the background. Um, we, we get to see a very, and this is actually a beautiful element of us, that we get to see a human story. We get to see a, we, we get attached to a person and their own personal, um, a, a, actually the more important story to me watching this was her managing the mental health of her family. And, um, and that, of course, is also a very relevant and, and important story to tell. How were, how did you play with that balance? How did you know how how what kind of decisions were made to say, oh, we need th this the background needs to be more clear, or um, or we want to focus on Charlotte? Uh, well, we adapted her work, so she created this incredible um, piece called Life or Theater, Life with a Question Mark or Theater with a Question Mark, and it is a graphic novel that's also sort of auto fiction because she renames her characters, but the names are very close to their real names. And so when she was depicting her life story or a story of her life, she didn't put that much emphasis either on political events. So we took that cue there. In terms of how expository we were going to be, we made the choice that we would hope our audience had some notion of the Holocaust, so we weren't going to be over ex expository. And also, going from her representation of the rise of the net, like uh, of that period and its impact, the political environment and its impact on her life, uh, I, she was sort of blasé, and we can imagine that it could have been like that. You know, you're in school and someone comes in and salutes Hitler and then you go on with your painting or you walk down the street and there are swastikas on flags and okay, there are swastikas on flags and maybe next month there won't be swastikas on flags. So it, uh, it wasn't compelling until it was compelling for her. And it's interesting how it also worked into her art itself as far as it being the, the art, uh, the, her art teachers in Germany were very much about keeping with the structure and her, her breaking from that, um, I think, plays as, a, as another level in the film. Well, she, just, she was more in a tradition that predates the rise of, of the Nazis. That art show that they went to is the only thing we completely invented. Uh, she didn't depict going to the de degenerate art show, but we imagined that she would have gone as an art student in Berlin. That exhibit is still the most attended exhibit of uh, the 20th century in terms of pure numbers. Wow. Yeah. Um, before I take some questions from the audience, I want to I want to ask what what are you hoping the response from an audience would be? People keep asking me that, and I don't know what to say. I, I realize I was like I should have an answer for that. Well, what I'd like is for everyone to Google Charlotte Salomon. That's really what I want, and people tend to do that. And you can find all of Life in Theater online, and you can order it from Amazon. Uh, so that's what I really want is to amplify and support. Um, people knowing her work more and reconsidering her work. Thank you. I would love to take uh, questions from the audience. We have a microphone passing here. Um, this is unfortunately not a question, but your use of the color palettes that you did, so bright, just almost primary colors, and it was such a contrast all the time to what you knew was in the background. You don't say it, but you knew that. It was just unbelievable. And the, the pictures of the towns, and the, they must have been 2D. It, it, you know, when you had the towns, and then you showed the- The backgrounds in Yeah, France? the backgrounds. Yeah. They were just so remarkable. And because you knew what was gonna happen the whole time, they were, even more impressive, and and you felt more tension, and the you know the cinematic depiction of Charlotte was just <coughs> something I didn't think could be achieved. Thank you, Charlotte. Didn't this is a fun fact? Charlotte didn't use the color uh, black, so we didn't use the color black, and we were inspired by her. She used a much darker palette for Berlin and a much brighter palette for France. Yeah. Notable there and, and makes sense in real life too. Yeah, uh, I mean, we, we wanted the environment that the story occurred in to be, to feel realistic. There's a certain, you know, Charlotte invites us to wonder about the relationship between, you know, truth and representation by calling her work Life or Theater. And yet she died in the Holocaust. So we wanted 
the, the world that this occurred in to feel as real as possible. We have another question. Hi, thank you. How did you piece together um, her life events after she left Berlin? She depicted some in in Life for Theater, uh, and um, Audley survived the war and was interviewed. So scholars have some uh, testimony as to what happened there. while we get to our next questions up there. Um, this is a really hard film, I'm sure, to distribute, um, to exhibit. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's wonderful, can speak to so many people, um, but to get people in there, oh, to see an animation about uh, World War II, the Holocaust, um, and, and her story, um, what do you tell people for that? I just, I think it's as hard or easy as any dramatic film destined for an adult audience. I don't dwell on the animation, maybe, yeah. So we're opening on Friday, and we're opening at the Quad here, and a few cinemas in LA, and 14 different cinemas across Canada, and we're gonna open in France, and Belgium, and Spain, and the UK, and yeah. I mean, and m there was a, Flea came out, and people went to go see Flea, so it's not easy to get people into cinemas now, but I don't think this will be harder than others. We'll see. That's well, well worth it. We're going to take a question up there, but well worth it, and please tell your friends. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, my question was the relationship between the grandfather and a grandchild. Um, I, I, it's hard to realize. <laughs> Having 15 grandchildren, I just can't imagine that he was so cruel and didn't want her to get to a place uh, where she might be saved. And also, how did you know exactly what happened in that final relationship there? So when we started this, we didn't know that she had poisoned her grandfather. At the end of Life for Theater, there are pages and pages of text, Charlotte just writing and writing and writing, and it was learned by scholars that her stepmother kept some pages back from the museum that it was donated to, and on those pages, she confessed to this. But, you know, she does call it life for theater. So we went with that in talking with the Charlotte Salomon Foundation. But her first boyfriend survived the war and denied they had any sexual relationship. <laughs> but we, you know, we chose to depict this. I'm overwhelmed with the movie. I think you're not going to have any trouble distributing it. <laughs> My question is about the process of having art coming on the screen preceding the actual work. And uh, I mean, I'm, not, I'm, I'm a more music person than an art person, but I was so struck by the process, y you must have used together with, I can't imagine <laughs> that's what I'm trying I to I think say. technically it's very simple. I don't, I don't actually remember how they did it. It was done by our partners in Belgium, but they basically sort of, they deconstructed it and then reconstructed it. But we always knew that we were having these art transitions. We just didn't know what they were and it kept being delayed and delayed and delayed. And we saw some versions of it and they were not good. Um, and then these finally showed up, and it's so interesting to see, to be surprised, even us, the filmmakers, by the impact, because it really, um, one of the directors, it's his absolute favorite part of the film. It's what tends to give people, despite the bleakness in her story, a feeling of hope in this film. We have a question up here. Hi there, I just wanted to know a little bit more about how her art was discovered and and um, got into the museum eventually. Well, you saw the the crates being taken from the basement, and so it was given to Audley, Audley, to Charlotte's parents, who you saw survive the war, and then eventually they contacted a curator in Holland who did a show in the '60s, but it was presented as sort of. Um, the pastime of a female artist journaling. 
And so I think that's one reason why we don't know enough about her. Oh, well, the, the doctor kept it. Remember, she gives it to the doctor and says, please keep it safe, it's my whole life. You also try, um, decide to open the movie with that moment, which I, I thought was interesting. Why, why, was, uh, why start there? We wanted people to have a sense from the beginning that um, there was a reason that we were telling the story of Charlotte. That she, so we wanted them to know that she'd made this thing and it's important. And the screenwriter disagreed. He thought we should just start. So. No one right one, one, one right way to do it. Um, I, I want to just dive in a little deeper into um, just because I was really struck by the mental health story that's being told there, and, um, I, and it's something that's that's there throughout, uh, of course, for Charlotte herself and um, and for her family, and of course, this is her big discovery about her family. Um, how did you? What? Where? How did you go about um, tackling that topic, knowing that that topic, of course, is, is one that affects so many people? Charlotte was our guide. She wrote about it in Life for Theater. So we, we, we followed what she did. It's, it, it's amazing how, how, it's like how it resonates and makes it so relevant to today. Yeah, there's, there's lots in this story that feels contemporary, um, not least of which Charlotte was a refugee. Let's, let me just take the microphone so everyone can hear you. How, how was the discovered artwork connected to the parents alive in Amsterdam? And at what time did, were the um, interviews done with the parents? Was that in the 60s? That's a great question. I think it might be the 60s. It might be around the time that the work was initially exhibited. But it may be earlier. So Audely found them after the war because she was here. And so they corresponded and then the, the parents went down and, and got the work. And then I think they lobbied to find a curator who'd be interested in, in showing it. I want to thank you so much. Thank you for this beautiful film, folks. Again, it opens this Friday at the Quad Cinema. Tell your friends. And um, thank you again so no, much. Thank you all for coming.